show the three dimensions away from Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, being called Satellite for the Planet of the Apes. I'm your host, 3D Jake, and today we're looking at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, released in 2024. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is the continuation of the Caesar saga, if you will. The movie is directed by Wes Ball and is written by Josh Friedman from a story by Rick Joffrey and Amanda Silver and Josh Friedman. The movie stars Owen Teague, Freya Allen, Kevin Durant, Peter Macron, and of course William H. Macy. The movie is essentially a continuation of the Seeger trilogy that ended after war where it essentially takes place a hundred years later or like in the couple hundred years later and it's essentially about this character called Noah who is played by Owen Teague who basically is trying to get an egg and he's trying to like because you know they're practicing with eagles about that helps them hunt and survive and stuff in this world the apes and so of course she comes across a human and uh, Noah comes across this human and then of course the play by Freya Allen and then of course this human kind of is like people are after him Kevin Durant's man are after this human and they're looking for her because she has secrets and so of course Noah has to end up teaming up because this apes do horrible things to his village so he team he ends up teaming up with this character and Peter Macron's character to try to go and get his people back the movie is essentially it, it is a soft re not really a soft reboot it's a sequel I would say people have been using the term soft reboot I will say it is the beginning of a new series of movies that's the best way I can describe it. like the original trilogy happened this is more of a continuation I wouldn't say like Mad Max I would not say like that but more or less like this is a okay the three movies happened before and this one is a continuation of those three movies but focusing on new characters in a new ser in a new like in a new time setting and I think that's just great. I really enjoyed that. Um, but this movie, I had issues with. I went to see this movie. I, you know, I did. I did not care much for the War for the Planet of the Apes at first. And so when I went in this movie, the trailers looked amazing. I, the, I, the posters looked beautiful. I was like, I love this movie. And so I was like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna love this movie. I'm so happy to see this movie. And everybody, and I heard a great response. And so I sat down, went for my birthday. And this movie was such a letdown. I was just so bummed about this movie because I was like waiting for this movie. And the second it starts, like I'm like 20 minutes in, and I'm like nothing is happening. It's just him looking for an egg, and I'm just like, really? Like we're literally still here. Like when you look at Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is literally like top tier grade A film. When the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It's literally like, okay, they're hunting, you know, they kill a bear, and then eventually the humans come into the conflict. That is really within the first 20 minutes. I literally timed it. I'm like, okay, we already know where our second plot point is coming in at in 20 minutes mark. We still don't know. And I'm like, they literally, the movie kind of feels like it drags its feet. Like, it's like, why wouldn't you just speed this up kind of thing? Like, just chop it up. Like, all right, they look for an egg. They couldn't find it. And then, of course, he has, like, a conversation and then, of course, the humans come in, and or not the humans, but then the other bad apes come in, and then that really kind of makes the conflict, and then we keep, continue on. Rather than it feels like just drags its feet to where it's like, oh my, almost like an hour before the, like the other apes come in, and then it just becomes like these two characters, you know, and then, of course, he finds like, you know, this other ape, played by Peter Macron's character, who basically is like the last worshiper of the original Caesar's tribe. Where he worships Caesar's law, and he explains like the backstory about the apes and the humans and all that stuff. And basically, he is like the, essentially that character that is like the good morality of the character. And he's a great character, but he literally like it just it, it, they team up for like like twenty minutes, and then of course he dies, and then it goes to the other plot. I'm like, this feels like this is like three different idea stories just jammed into one. It's like okay, you have this ape, then it comes a revenge story. Then it becomes like, hey, it's a bunny team-up movie with a human. Then it becomes like, okay, we're like, it's basically back to where we were with War, where it's like Schindler's List. But, of course, this time, it's apes it's like doing it to apes, you know? And then, of course, you have this other storyline where they're wanting to get in a bunker. And it's just like stuff like that where I'm just like, okay, you got three different stories. Just combine it into one. Don't sit there and make it three. Like, seriously, I understand there's A plot and B plot, but there's three different plots. There's A, B, and C. I'm like, look... I understand you're trying to combine A and B together, but, like, why couldn't this just be, like, 
A and B be the same plot, and then C kind of work its way in. I don't mind them trying to get in the bunker. I thought that was an interesting idea. Like, there are some great ideas, I think, that are in this movie. Like, the human, like the apes want to get in that bunker because they feel like they can destroy the humans once and for all. I thought that was a great concept. I also thought that they had, like, when they had the apes, they're sitting there drinking water, and the humans, and then May sees the, all the way apes drinking, all the humans drinking water, and the apes show up and start, like, it becomes just like the original Planet Apes where they're, you know, they're, you know, capturing humans because they're looking for May and everything. And I thought that was so great. And I like how the apes had wore those like met coconut mask. And it looked just like the orcs in the Battle of Helm's Deep and Lord of the Rings or Two Towers. And I just loved that how it looked and it was so cool. I thought that was amazing. And I do like that the, when they attacked the Camp Noah's camp. I thought that was so great. How he was just like they were just like, you know, just killing apes and up and right. I thought that was looking for May. And I thought that was really good. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. And then I also like, you know, like their sequence in the bunker where like, you know, when they're in the bunker and she blows up the dam and you see all the apes just getting flooded. And I thought that was really cool and how they're having to climb. And there's one gorilla trying to kill Noah and then like he drowns. And then like you have the other ape, which is like Proximus Caesar, who I will say is the best character in the entire film. Proximus Caesar is the best one. He, the only thing is he only has like 15 minutes of screen time though. Like he's in all the ads and the trailers and all that stuff. He's doing press. He's only in the movie for 15 minutes. Like literally, he show like he shows up, has a what a wonderful day, and then of course he has like a dinner scene, and then literally you don't see him until like at the closer to the end of the movie where he basically like you know oh also yeah when he whenever the wonderful day scene he tried to get them to blow up the thing to get inside the vault and they don't so then of course the dinner scene and then of course afterwards he's literally with the other apes going and he says you got in like you know and. Like, I do like that when they get in the vault and then Proximus Caesar walks in and he's like, then the girl pulls out a gun and kills one of the apes. And, you know, it's like, you know, goes, there's more of those in there. You can go, but just tell us, is there more power like that? I thought that was a good idea because, like, what if they get, because they have missiles, rockets, they have, like, tanks. Like, if the apes get a hold of that, that would be catastrophic for the human race because they're just going to blow them up with machine guns, and it's going to be like Koba 2.0. And I think that's so cool. Unfortunately, they never they never do anything with it because it's just more like tease and not show. And I think that really sucks because it would have been really cool if they would have had that. And, you know, Proximus Caesar would have been great, great to do that with. I mean, oh, man. And I think that was just such a missed opportunity. And uh, I do like that idea of it, though. And, like, I do like the flooding of it. I thought that was really cool, too. And I just thought Proximus Caesar, though, I thought he was kind of bummed. That he only, and then, of course, they do the bird thing where just the birds kill him. And I'm like, oh, come on. Like, that would have been a cooler death with if, like, they would have had a fight in the bunker at the end and then he kills Proximus Caesar. You know, and, it, like, you know, with, his, with, the, with the firepower he wanted or something. Like, I thought it would have been cool, but, you know. And, like, but, and also my issue along the ways is, like, I feel like I thought May was, May's kind of, like, not a, a, a protagonist. She's not a protagonist. She's a secondary protagonist, but. When she blows up the dam, she kind of becomes like the antagonist. Like she says, I don't like apes. She doesn't like apes and all that stuff. And she basically was going to kill Noah. But then when Noah gave a speech about see it, she just let, let him be. And the whole plot that pissed me off is the satellite plot. Like I'm, I thought originally I was thinking, oh, what is this like a secret remake of Planet of the Apes? Like what is like she was like Charlton Heston's character, Taylor, that just crash lands. Nope, that's not her character at all. And instead, really, she's from a bunker. And it never establishes if like... They, if, like, she's, like, I was thinking, oh, maybe she's frozen. Like, what if, like, she's frozen? And then that was the character. Nope, that's not their character at all. I mean, from a, from an acting standpoint, she does a great job in the story. I think it's just where it was weak. For, the story was weak for me because I feel like there was, like, I feel like they had two different ideas of, like, what this May should be. And, like, they call her Nova, but really her name is May. And, like, she's from a bunker, but they never established what bunker, like, why and stuff. Instead, she's like, okay, I was from a bunker. And they never established, like, I think, you know, when, like, did they, what, what happened, when did she go in the bunker? Apparently, she's like, you know, we got past the virus, and there's other bunkers, and we just want this little chip so we could talk to, you know, hard drive, so we could talk to each other on other satellites. And I'm like, that's kind of dumb, because then it kind of does undoes everything War and Dawn kind of established. And I think that that kind of is more like the middle finger to the Matt Reeves trilogy than anything else. And I think that kind of pissed me off a little bit. And I'm like, wouldn't it have been better if, you know, this is just me. I mean, look, I think from a story perspective, this is where this movie crashes. I would have just liked to have seen where, like, you know, just a little bit, you know, just like maybe May, like after she shows her villain aside, if maybe she would have just said, like, look, you to find out the reason why she wants this because 
she's cryogenically. All the humans that before the virus started, the vi as the virus was starting, all the rich people and all the other people that volunteered and everything that were selected went to like this, like cryogenically frozen. And then basically she woke up and her and her family accidentally woke up. And then she's just trying to, and then of course they were killed by apes. And so she realized that, the, you know, she needs this, this thing to unlock because she tried to figure out how to get it. But it, it needs, her father told her, it needs like, you know, this hard drive. And so she's like, if I do this, I can unlock all the pods. And then I means we'll, we will literally have enough humans where we can get firepower and we'll go and we'll kill all the apes. And that way we'll try to repopulate the planet and make us the dominant species. That's what I thought was going to be, like, her big thing. And I thought that would have been really cool, especially if I imagine, like, Noah, like, she was trying to do that, and, like, she took the hard drive, Noah followed her, because I was waiting, because I thought Noah, when she blew up the thing, Noah was going to come after her after Proxima Caesar. He was going to go after her and stop her from doing that with the hard drive. And instead, she was just like, nope. She shows up on a horse and goes, hi, and then had it with a gun behind her back. And I'm like, what? And instead, that's what I think she should have done, was, like, he should have followed her, and she should have shot at him and everything, and... Like she, and then it turns out, like, and then of course, it would have been really cool if she would have did that with a heart bunker, though. I thought it would have been cool if she would have hit that with a bunker, and then he met, and then he, they get into a fight, like, with a fist fight, and then he ends up, like, brutally hurting her, and then she tries to pick the pistol up, and then she ends up hitting the hard drive, but Myth puts it in the wrong slot, and instead sends a beak in the space where, like, Charlton Heston would one day hear it, and, like, you could do a post credit scene even, where, like, the ship is coming towards Earth, and you could say sometime later or whatever. But, like, that would have been the beacon that sent them back to Earth, you know, and with the ape, Planet of the Apes, you know. I thought that would have been cool instead, you know, and the humans just sit there in the cryopods forever. And, like, I think Noah should have, like, killed her with a, her own gun, you know, as she was hitting the thing. He would have, and so she would have died by the weapon she created in a way, like, the man made. I thought that would have been cool, and she would have been like, oh, you can never, you know, he says, this is not your planet. This is the planet of humans. And he goes, no longer planet of echoes, planet he said, planet now, well, planet of ape. You know, like, that would have been, like, cool. I mean, something like that, what I thought would have been cooler, you know? But, like, oh, yeah. I thought that would have been really cooler. Instead, it's just like, hey, I got the satellite signal, guys. Hey, there's a bunch of humans that can talk and everything. We've just been in the bunkers, like, Fallout style. Yay! Plug it in. All right, we're going to talk to other people. Well, why the fuck don't you just kill all the apes, okay, if you have bunkers? You know, like, hey, we'll get together, kill all the apes. I mean, I mean, that just to me never made sense because we literally established two films. We had two freaking films that establishes they are the last group of humanity. Okay, Don was about them getting the power back on. So that way they could see if there's any humans out there. Okay? They were literally doing that. The whole point of that movie is so they could see if there's any humans out there. War was because they the power was gone because everything was destroyed by the other apes. And literally, they're like, we are the, even Woody Harrelson says, we are the last group of humanity. There is a small fraction of humanity left. And it'll be a planet of apes. And then they die, the humans die at the end. In war. And then it's like, and all the humans that do survive will have this virus. It literally establishes that. It literally does. You know, it makes no freaking sense why these humans are in there. Unless it says they were in a bunker. They were in the bunker. And they were quarantinically frozen. They come out. And then... But then still, it makes no sense that... Just, I'm just saying, it just feels like this movie saying, Fuck you, we're establishing our own continuity. And this is a sequel, because at the beginning of the movie, which is something I love, they show Caesar's funeral. I thought that was really great. I really liked it. Like, oh my god, this is like literally picking up right after war. And then it jumps to like decades later, or centuries later. I'm like, oh yeah. And instead, it just feels like... It just says like, yeah, you know how you like this? Or well, bitch slapping that off the floor. This is our trilogy, bitch. Fuck Caesar. Fuck Andy Serkis. Fuck Matt Reeves. You know, this is our series now, bitch. You know, it's almost, it'd be like if, like, literally, like, it'd be like literally if, like, Tim Burton had Charlton Heston in the movie, and then this is literally was just, like, just for a gag, which, I mean, you could say the Planet of the Apes did that in the Tim Burton movie, but I would feel like, that would be like, you know, if he was just like, like rewrite, which I mean, you could be, some people could argue that, that Tim Burton actually did that, but I feel like that's what this movie did, you know, and I honestly said, told a friend of mine, I enjoyed the Mark Wahlberg Planet of the Apes movie more than this movie. Like this movie, I rewatched Mark Wahlberg's Planet of the Apes for a review for Ryan Cam on his channel, check it out if you haven't, uh, that this movie is actually much worse than that movie because this movie pissed me the hell off because, and, but I will say it did make me appreciate war more. I will say I had issues with war, but war is a cohesive 
movie that actually feels like it belongs in the movie compared to this movie which feels like some fan fiction wrote it and then they were like this and the sad thing is it was it was a story credit from rick joffrey and amanda silver who wrote the first two movies and I always said like oh i think they should have wrote the third film because it would have helped the story better but instead this movie which i think honestly they wrote a story but then josh friedman who's a terrible writer who wrote a lot of awful movies and shit well wrote this script and was like oh i'm gonna do this instead so I think if they would have had a more cohesive writing team, like if Mark Wombach would have came back with Matt Reeves and wrote the story, I think it would have been a better storyline. Instead, this feels like just a bastardized version of the of like War and Dawn, and just it's not very good. Um, I didn't enjoy this movie. I highly do not recommend it. If you say I just wait till Disney Plus to watch it because honestly, and the movie made fifty eight million, which people are happy about. Like, you realize it's got like a hundred and sixty million dollar budget, and on top of that, this movie got to break two hundred domestically to be considered a hit. And it might, it might like, it might make two oh five or something, but like, that's not good, you know, compared to like, for instance, like you know, like other franchises. Okay, I'm just saying, and like, I just don't think people are happy. Like, oh yeah, that's great. I mean, even overseas, like this movie is gonna have to at least make over like four hundred million overseas to be hit. hit. I'm just saying, people don't act like that's a good thing. It's not. Like, but I'm, that's just me. But hey, um, but I mean, hey. If, they said we're gonna get five more movies so yay i guess if i had to give this movie a grade i would give it a c plus thank you so much